Hi, I'm Semen Yakov. This presentation is entitled Lossless DVDT Control of PWM Pulses and Intuitive Explanation. There is a reference here which actually describes the method that I'm covering here. I'm going also to print this reference at the page of this YouTube video that you are now watching. So what is the problem we are addressing? Here I'm showing a three-phase inverter that feeds a motor and then we have here PWM pulses coming out of each half bridge here. Looks like that. The average of which is the waveform that we wish, like a sinusoidal waveform, average sinusoidal voltage. The transitions of these pulses have some DVDT, and if we use a fast transistor like GAN MOSFET, the, this DVDT could be fairly high, could be in the range of 40 volt to nanosecond, and actually could be even faster than that. Now, as it turns out, very fast DVDT are not desirable for a motor. It has been shown that fast DVDT causes the deterioration of the stator windings, and this is because uh, the buildup of oscillation, especially if there is a cable between the inverter and the motor, and this uh, oscillation uh, causes spikes, which cause, uh, might cause corona and some other processes which damage the insulation of the wires of the state. So fast DVDT is not very desirable. And the question is, how one way of course is to control it by the gate drive, uh, use a higher value resistance to the gate resistor. And this of course will cause a slower rise time and fall time of the voltage and current. But unfortunately, if you do that, the power, which is the overlap of the product during the overlap time, uh, this power will be high, and so therefore the losses will be much higher. So in fact, if you do that, you lose the benefit of the fast transistor, of the GAN transistor. If you use a GAN transistor and you slow it down, then uh, what's the point? I mean, you choose it to begin with because it has a very fast transition DVDT and therefore small switching losses. There are some other methods to achieve a slow DVDT. One of them is using a filter, LC filter. Now, unfortunately, the LC filter for a power system would have a high Q because if the Q is high, the quality factor is high, then this is what we're going to see at the output of this filter. It's going to oscillate and eventually it's going to damp out, but uh, damping requires uh, passive resistances in the circuit. So this method by itself is not good, and in order to make it practical, we have to add some damping resistors, and this is done today. So there is a way to put here in parallel to the inductor resistor, in series with the capacitor or resistor with a diode clamping to the bus. So these are possible solutions to get something of this nature. That is a nice uh, response, that is the quality factor is about one and therefore the overshoot will be low and this is what we are going to get. Unfortunately, these resistors again um, are lossy and they cause a lot of uh, power dissipation and uh, it's not just that they are reducing the efficiency but you really need the resistor of high dissipation value, that is these are large, physically large resistors. Now the method that I'm going to show in this presentation to discuss is providing a waveform like this but without practically losses. I mean, there are some additional losses, of course. There's no free lunch, but not like uh, these damping resistors. So the objective here is to generate a waveform like this, that is with a slow DVD-T, without adding substantial losses. In order to cover the method, I need to go quickly over some basics of resonant circuits. And this is a resonant circuit, of course, a RLC circuit. So let's have a look at the uh, crucial parameters here. The quality factor is the characteristic impedance over the resistance. Uh, the 
resonant frequency, the natural resonant frequency is one over square root of LC. However, if you feed a step here to this filter, you're going to have some oscillation here. The frequency of oscillation, this uh, F sub D, is related to the natural resonant frequency here by this equation. As you can see, that when the quality factor is high, we are converging back to the omega sub zero. And we'll assume that this is the case that we are now talking about. That is, we are talking about a LC filter with high Q. So therefore, the oscillations are about one over square root of LC. Because again, as I've said, uh, you choose a inductor with the low resistance and also the ESR of the capacitor you choose to be of low value. So now if we feed a step to a filter like this, this is what we are going to see here. That is, we're going to see a waveform which is hardly uh, damped. Uh, it is around V in, this is V in here, and actually it will reach twice uh, V in here. And the expression for this waveform for this region here, I'm not talking about the initial value, is V in 1 plus sinus omega 0 T. This is, this is the sinusoidal riding on the V in, and this is for the equality factor, which is much larger than one. So now let's have a look now at some uh, phaser diagram related to what we're going to talk about. And let's assume now that we have three voltages, three phasers, V1, V2, V3, which are like a three phase arrangement that is they are 120 degree run from the other okay so this will be like 120 this will be 240 and we assume that the absolute value that is the magnitude is the same and of course since we have now these three phases separated by this 120 degree it can be shown it's very clear that uh, the sum of these vectors is actually zero. That is, if you add up sinus omega t plus sinus omega t shifted by 120 degree plus sinus omega t shifted by 240, you get zero. Okay, so this is well known, this is nothing new about it. Now I'm going to look now at a somewhat different situation in which I have three waves, v1, v2, and V3, but V2 now is at 60 degree, but has a negative magnitude, okay? Now, obviously, if this is 60 degree and it is negative magnitude, it is like 240. So therefore, sine omega t plus 240 is like minus sine omega t plus 60 degrees. So therefore, as we had before, when we sum off all of these is zero. Then also, if we have a sinus omega t at zero phase, minus now sinus omega t 60 degree, this is this one, but with the minus sign, so it's going actually this way, plus sine omega t plus 240, it's also equal to zero. Okay, so now let's do some mental experiment. Suppose I'm feeding a step function here to a filter. This is V sub 1. Here it is. And we have an LC and therefore this is the response we are expecting. A sinusoidal waveform riding on the V in or the V1 around it. Now I'm going to introduce another pulse but in this case it's going to be negative. Okay? So therefore the expression is minus V in, okay? And in this case, it's shifted by 60 degree because I'm shifting the beginning here or the initiation of this pulse or the beginning of the pulse is shifted by a time which is corresponding to 60, a phase of 60 degree. And then I'm going to put another pulse positive again 
and again it's shifted by 60 degree so therefore it's going to be what it's positive and therefore this is this relationship this is total of 120 degree refer to the first one okay and as we understand now these sinusoidal waveforms in this region here where they exist sum up to the in the sinusoidal waveform are by themselves zero but we have plus v in minus v in plus v in so we have v in left what does it mean it means that you have if you have these three pulses coming in added up to a lc filter during this time there be no oscillation because these are canceling each other so let's have a look at it here what I'm saying is that if I feed to an LC filter pulses like this one, this one, and this one, the oscillation that will build up in this region are going to cancel each other because of the phase shift of the 60, 60, and 120. This is a 60 plus minus sign. Now, these three actually sum up to a pulse that looks like this. Here it's plus. The minus is reducing it back to zero, and here it is plus again. So this is actually the waveform. So what does it mean? And this is now the idea that I am now uh, conveying here, which again was described in the paper that I've referenced. The idea is the following. If you have a PWM pulse, and if you build it in such that you have a beginning pulse here and an end pulse here, which are shifted by 60 degree each one of them then you'll end up with a pulse that looks like this because in this region the oscillation cancel each other therefore you're going to get the value of v in the actually pulse value and then you have a slow rise and a slow fall depending on the LC because you see that the, at the very beginning we have only the first one these have not started yet so therefore what we see at the very beginning of the pulse is in fact this rise of this sinusoidal waveform depending on the LC and the resonant frequency which of course you can adjust you can select LC such that the resonant frequency will be a low frequency and then you'll get a uh, very slow divided dt and here is a simulation we see here now three pulses here's the plus one here's the minus one here's the plus again these are the sinusoidal waveform generated by a filter by this filter due to each one of them the sum of them is here so this is the end result we're going to see here only this bright which of course can be adjusted depending on the LC values of the filter. And here is just another picture, which is now more related to what we're going to do in the actual system. We're going to provide a initial pulse, a delay, and then the main pulse. And due to, again, the mechanism that I have explained, we're going to have here, and this is from simulation, we're going to have very slow rise time depending on the LC. Here you see we are talking about uh, two microsecond, you know, overall time from zero to the maximum. And of course, the rise time of the actual pulse does not matter here. I mean, it could be very, very fast. And then the output will look like this independent on the DVD-T of the initial pulse. Uh, generating these uh, waveforms. So what is the conclusion here? First of all, we understand that we can generate any DVD-T, well, any practical DVD-T, by properly selecting the value of the LC components of the filter. So this is very, very nice. Now, this is independent of the original transition of the transistors themselves, that is, the, they could be very fast DVD-T, so as far as switching losses, we are not losing the VDT, we are not losing the loss due to the 
slowing down of the rise and fall time of the voltage and current of the MOSFET or any other switch. But we are adding transitions. That is, rather than having one transition, we have now three. So for the overall, for the leading and trailing edge, we're actually adding more transition, four transistors. So it is a trade-off. We are losing uh, power. Uh, there are some losses associated because the switching losses are now higher, not due to the fact that the DVDT is changing at the transistor end, but rather due to the fact that we are adding transition. Let me just point out that what I'm showing here really is just a primer. There are many practical issues involved in implementing a system like this, which we did. But I hope that this presentation is a good uh, initial introduction to the subject. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.